Hey everybody, this is Nicolette out at Hidden Villa. I am a education teacher here and love to spend time in the wilderness. So I wanted to talk to you today a little bit about the adaptations of a snake. So I have a box of reptiles here. Now these reptiles are real, but they're not alive. So these specimens have been prepared by a taxidermist so that we can save them and share them with kids without them being alive. So um, you could get really up close and not be nervous, and you can even touch and feel the texture of the animal, but we, but we don't have to worry about them being afraid of us or getting away or anything like that. So it's a great way that we teach about animals in the wilderness. And I think the first thing people notice about snakes is the shape of the animal. So I'm gonna talk about three adaptations. And an adaptation is something an animal has or uses to be able to get what it needs from its habitat. So to be able to find food or to find water or to seek shelter uh, in the place where it lives, in the wilderness. And I have here, as you can see, a variety of snakes and lizards. Snakes and lizards are in the same order, so the same cat science category, but one big difference is that most lizards have legs and all snakes have no legs. So that makes them really um, able to slip through the grass and to slip through the rocks and the, the um, ground cover and move very quietly without disturbing their prey. So maybe if they're trying to catch a mouse that has big ears, if they can smoothly slide through all these uh, parts of the wilderness, they can catch their prey very easily and quickly. So that's a great adaptation. Another one is their coloring. My friend Logan earlier on today managed to catch a gopher snake. And gopher snakes are one of the common snakes we have here at Hidden Villa. They have uh, colors, shades of brown and beige and even a little black sometimes. Those are perfect colors to blend into the, the ground colors uh, in the wilderness. Now, they also do something called mimicking, and this is just that the, the, the uh, patterns on the, on the body of a gopher snake are a lot like a rattlesnake. Now, the, uh, the, I do have a rattlesnake here in this container, and it's this snake right here. So, if you compare the, the cut shape of the um, pattern on the rattlesnake with the gopher snake, they're really a lot alike. And that helps the gopher snake trick other animals into thinking that it's actually a rattlesnake. But there's one easy way to tell the difference. Rattlesnakes have a rattle. And they have, you probably know this, rattlesnakes are poisonous. They have poison in their teeth. And they're able to inject that poison into their prey and paralyze their prey. Um, but they warn you ahead of time. It's a very courteous thing that rattlesnakes do. They have this rattle that they shake back and forth and they just want uh, pe people to know or large animals to know that they don't mean any harm. They want to warn you that they're there. They give you lots of chances to walk away before they feel nervous and have to try to defend themselves. So, uh, so that's a really interesting detail about the gopher snakes patterns. Now the third thing I wanted to talk about was the jaw or the way that um, a, a, a snake like a gopher snake or a rattlesnake catch their prey. So some snakes are constrictors, which means they grab their prey and they wrap their body around it and squeeze it until it can't breathe anymore. These are not constrictors. Rattlesnakes and gopher snakes actually uh, catch their prey and hold on to it until it suffocates and stops moving. So one way that they can make that happen is inside their, te their jaw, they have teeth that move back, that, that uh, point backwards. So instead of the, like an alligator where the teeth are up is straight, you know, the sharp part is up straight, it actually kind of curves backwards, those teeth. So when they grab onto an animal, they're able to sort of pull the animal down to the, through their throat by using these backward facing teeth. It's almost like trying to go against um, a, uh, a barb, you know. So it grabs these animals and kind of moves them down. And their jaw is a very special kind of jaw. So most jaws, like yours and mine, just are on one uh, joint on either side and they open like this, just up and down. Snakes have an extra joint in their jaw. So instead of just going up like this, 
they have another joint that doubles the size of their jaw opening. So they can actually swallow animals that are two or three times the diameter of the snake by using this special jaw. And I could go on about snakes forever because they are so interesting. Those are the three uh, adaptations I wanted to share with you today. Body shape, the coloring, which also is camouflage, right, can hide in the wilderness or mimic another animal. And the third one is the mouth and the jaw, how they're able to capture and hang on to their prey. I hope you learned some things about snakes today and you get so excited that you, you know, maybe uh, do some more research about the wonderful adaptations of this incredible animal. This is Nicolette from Hidden Villa and I'll hope to see you on the farm.